Well, hello there, beautiful people. It's Trina. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while since I've been on uh, YouTube, I think. Almost three weeks. Sometimes this happens, you know, get busy with work. Uh, but today, uh, even though I'm exhausted from not getting enough sleep, I decided I'm finally going to tackle the project of dyeing this uh, old 1990s Louis Vuitton reed bag that is in pretty good condition, but uh, has a few stains on the side here and a stain on the strap itself. And also the strap is a little bit uh, destroyed here. So I'm going to have to be very careful when I dye this part. So you've seen me do videos on this channel, dyeing patent let them before, uh, leather before. So I'll link to those either up here or down below uh, in case I decide not to go in as much detail, which I probably won't. But let me outline exactly what I'm going to be doing. There's a hair in my mouth at the beginning and then just play some music for you while I go through the dyeing process. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take some acetone and with a used cloth here that's black and I'm going to dye it black so it doesn't matter and just go over all the patent and this is going to remove um, in to some extent anyway the patent coating and also give it a stickiness that will help the paint adhere to it. So that's first. Then I'm going to dye the whole bag black. I'm using um, fibings today. Uh, fibings, uh, this, <laughs> I've got paint all over it so you can't see it, but this is the, the company name is, can you see that? Fibings, but this is actually that I'm holding now. This is the Resoline, and the Resoline is a finishing product which I'm going to apply to only the straps after I finish two coats of regular black dye. Um, it gives it like a coating to waterproof it and seals the paint so it doesn't rub off. So Resoline is great, but it doesn't last forever. So as you use the bag, some of this eventually will peel off and you'll have to reapply it. So it's not perfect, but better than having um, an unfinished dye, I think. Then for uh, the bag itself, it'll probably require at least two coats, maybe three, maybe four, I don't know yet. And I imagine they'll be streaking at first, And um, but because I'm dyeing it black, I think eventually that'll go away. And I'm not gonna put Resoline on top of that when I'm done. Instead, I'm going to use what's called um, a leather sheen. And this has got, this is also from Fibings. And I forget why that is. Um, I'll link to my other video to maybe explain why, but I did some research and apparently leather sheen is good for um, patent leather and Resoline is good for like handles and vaqueta leather. So that's what we're gonna do. And the other thing I'm gonna say is that I'm not gonna bother to do the inside. This is a lot of intricate work and I just wanna be able to use this bag right now and I'm not too fussy about the inside. So although I'm dyeing the straps, I'm not gonna go in and dye there. It's because the color is really light and I don't wanna fudge up. And in fact, I'm not even gonna do, I'm not even gonna do the edges here. I'm going to just leave this, this top, what's it called? Is, that, is it called edging? You know where they put a plastic sort of coat on the raw edge to seal it off? That is not leather and therefore the paint will unlikely stick to it as well. So I think I'm going to try and leave this edge as it is. It's in good condition. And then just paint on the side. So you're going to, when I hold the bag, when it's black, you're going to see the, the yellow edge and you're going to see the inside that's yellow. And uh, it might look good. I, I've seen a few other people who have had this bag and dyed it um, on various social media platforms and some people have gone whole hog and dyed the whole thing um, and other people have just done what I said I'm going to do and it looks fine. So we'll, uh, we'll just uh, get to it then, shall we? Oh, I'm wearing nail polish. The rare occasion that I wear nail polish and uh, I'm using acetone. <laughs> Irony. Okay, the 
bag feels pretty gross now, so what the heck, let me just go in. Let me do the straps first, I think, today. Let's take, um, let's just take a broad brush here. I've already um, put some leather protector on this, by the way, some moisturizer, so the handles are pretty nourished. You should always do that before you dye um, a kit of leather, nourish it with some moisturizer, because, well, especially if it's a vintage bag, it's likely dried out. And if you watched one of my other videos, you'll remember that um, the chemicals I put on the strap that I was doing, both the um, dye and the subsequent resolin, resoline, basically caused my um, <laughs> my strap to sort of melt and it fell off. So you do have to be careful about it. I mean, there are chemicals, right? I am being really half butted about this. I am not worried about being meticulous at all. If I get leather on any, if I get black dye, um, right here because I'm going to be dyeing this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So, yeah. This is just to say that if someone messy and sloppy like me can do a good job, then you can too if you want to do a project like this. It doesn't have to be a Louis Vuitton bag. It can be any old bag that you want to bring to life and make more useful again because light-colored bags do stain. Things do get old-looking. And dyeing your product can uh, make it look good again, right? Okay, so that's the handles done, first coat. I'll just do a second coat lightly later on, and I, I won't show you that part. Although, I might show you a bit of the resoline part. We'll see how we go. But it's a pretty thick coat. Uh, I shouldn't do that, really. I should do thin coats, but uh, it's more important on the resoline to stay um, thin, I think, for the vaquetta anyway. So that's good, and I'll be able to wash off or wipe off the the... Uh, paint that got on the metal later on after everything has dried and finished so there you go so I didn't I pretty much did a, a Japanese chutahampa job of putting um, what's this called um, acetone, uh, acetone or nail polish remover onto the bag um, I don't know I'm this project is is a little bit half-assed to me I just want to get it done and want to start wearing the bag so I'm not being too fussy. Actually, when am I ever too fussy, really? I have to make sure I don't touch the inside of the bag now because my hands are getting a little stained. I'm not wearing gloves, naughty, naughty. And I think for, from now on, um, I'm gonna start, well, I'll just wipe off the, I'll wipe off some paint here on the brush, but I think what I'm gonna do now is start using one of these dabbers. And I have one here that's already been used and I'll just go directly onto the bag and just go to town, basically. 
being careful um, when I'm at the edges. So, ooh, that's pretty thick. Oh well, we'll get to it. In my last video, I recommended wiping down after every coat, but you know what guys? I am going to see what happens if I don't do that. Um, it might be streaky, it might be too thick, but I'm just going to spread this out as much as I can and maybe not wipe it. Hmm, we'll see how we go. And I'm going to do the edges later. I don't want to screw that up. So you can't see this right now, but I'm doing this underside of the bag. Looking good. Okay, I'm just going to wait for this. Uh, I've done the bottom, I've done the sides pretty nastily. You can't see them from this camera angle. Um, I don't know, I'll see if I can twist it around. Maybe, maybe not, a little bit there. Uh, but I'm gonna let this dry for a wee bit, and then I'm gonna do the other sides and I'm going to pay particular attention to the seams above here and also the seams within the bag to make sure the paint gets in. But I think I'm gonna stop it. I may continue a little more with you, but if I don't put it on camera, I hope you'll forgive me. And you can see that it's streaky. And again, I'm not going to uh, wipe this off. Usually between coats on patent leather, you're supposed to wipe it off, wipe it off but I'm gonna, See, I'm gonna let this dry full full on without wiping it down and maybe I'll regret that. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, I changed my mind guys. I think I am gonna go in and wipe off some of this. Not doing wonders for the texture. Maybe that was a bad idea. Oh uh, yeah, it was a bad idea, guys, because now I do have some stuff in here, some hair, I've transferred hair. Ah, oh, bad call. Oh well, we'll see what we can do to fix that. Hey guys, so I'm doing what I said I wouldn't do, which is to paint the trim. Basically, I couldn't get it to look the way I wanted to, so we're gradually dipping more into the bag than I wanted to do, but I think it looks better this way because um, I'm covering up the, um, well, you can see a comparison between this side and this side. I'm covering up the a lot of the stitching in black and I just think it looks better. So we're doing that and uh, I did botch up. I made a mistake in waiting for the paint to dry before wiping down. So I got some fibers from the cloth into the paint. So we're gonna deal with that a bit later. But right now it's almost done with one coat everywhere. So that's where we are. And I'm just painting over the top like this, if you can see my motions here. So this is uh, coat one of the drying process and I am not happy with how this is looking. As you can see, there's streaking, lots of it, and there is matte patches, and there are shiny patches too. And I think the lighting here really highlights that. You can also see some parts that I missed. I knew I would though. Um, yeah, I'm not happy with this, so I think I made a lot of mistakes, you know, shortcuts that I took this time that I didn't took in my, take in my previous project with the Houston bag. So first of all, I didn't uh, put an equal amount and enough acetone on it. So that's why there's still some shiny parts. Uh, second, I used a more of a matte colored 
uh, dye, I think, as opposed to the, I think last time I had Angelus, I think this is a, a pure matte finish with fibings. I'm not sure if that makes a difference, but I'm suspecting. And third, I didn't wipe down um, after every coat. Um, I did in the end decide to, but it had already dried by then. And then I impressed some, not on this side, I think it was this side, I had some fine hair. I don't know if this is good enough to see it, but there's some texture in there that the cloth left. So that'll probably wear out uh, out of time. Um, the leather straps are fine. I just have to go in again because some of the vaquetta is showing through. That's uh, uh, expected in the first coat. Um, I ended up doing the top here, as you can see. It's not professional, but I'll go in with a, a fine tip after. And I do uh, predict that this stuff will fall off over time. It's not a, prof you know, a super professional job. It's just me trying to do what I can. So you can see I've missed, can you see that there? Oh, come on, focus, you little sucker. There you go. Um, I've missed a little bit there too. So that's only coat one, so I'm not finished. Hopefully I'll be able to make it better, but obviously not a good first impression here. Oh well, luckily this bag cost me 35 bucks. And to be honest, um, I would probably still use this as opposed to using it in its original yellow color, which was yuck. Okay, I'll keep you posted. Okay, it's the next day, my friends. I've gone back in uh, several times to do some more coats, and I've basically solidified the hairs sticking in there. I've got a new texture on one side of the bag. That is my mistake, and uh, I'm going to have to live with it. So I don't, you probably can't see on camera, but I certainly can tell there's some embedded uh, painted in hairs. So I, I went over this about four times, which is much more than usual. And as I said, I'm not thrilled about the way it's turned out, but this is the last attempt to make it better now. It's the, um, the, sh the leather sheen that I'm gonna put on. And actually last night when I was doing a, a final coat, I, I accidentally put resoline on it and it looked pretty good. And <laughs> I went over it with black regular paint. But if this stuff fails, then I'm, I'm gonna go back and put resoline over it. You're not supposed to for whatever reason, but uh, I might do that. So this stuff is like a cream, so let's just go right in with that with a rag. Doesn't matter that it's all dirty because <clears throat> I am gonna go, it's just black dirt, so there you go, okay. Okay, you guys, um, wow, what a difference it is. That leather sheen does make a huge difference. Um, it's much, much better. I wouldn't say this is a perfect job, but, and it's still a little bit damp. It's, I just rubbed it in, you know? So it's basically a, um, a cream acrylic finish that this is. And it's evening out the shine and the texture a little bit. But interesting, it's interestingly, it's also bringing out some blemishes. Like this looks like some sort of burn I did in the process. I'm gonna try and paint over that black and see if I can't at least hide it. It looks like, literally looks like a skin cancer. <laughs> it's really strange. And then um, there are some bluish streaks. I think it was on the other side. Yeah, right here. Can you see that in the light? I think that might've been where I screwed up with the resoline. I don't know, I'm gonna, go over that with some black again. And here too, it's the same thing. Some chemical misses here. The hairs on this are, <laughs> you can really see them, but uh, still it's better than the yellow. I, I'm overall, I'm pleased with it. I have to take off obviously these little bits here. I'll do that with acetone. Um, yeah, so we're almost done here. Let me try and fix it up and uh, 
it'll be ready to go. It feels dry already. It's pretty impressive. Whether I should go over with Resoline or not, mm, it's tempting, you know? It really is tempting. Maybe I'll try it on the bottom and see if it, oh, I don't know. I don't want to botch it, you know? I don't think the Resoline's going to destroy it, but uh, I mean, it would definitely give it its shine. That's what this does, but it might end up problematic later because it'll be peeling and all that sort of thing. Mm, I don't know. Okay, let me get the paint back out and try and fix these problems. the obvious places where it was bothering me. Now it's got a shine back to it. Um, so I'm just gonna let this dry. Right now I have two bags to reveal to you the day after all my hard work painting and this afternoon as well. Uh, but I'll save one of the reveals for the next video and you have to wait for that next week to see what it is. Today I'm going to reveal my Louis Vuitton read back. Bag. Back? Bag. Here it is. So it didn't turn out as bad as I was thinking it would be and basically I think that's because I did a couple of things. One is that I went through a lot of coatings of paint to just sort of get the color saturated. And the second thing I did was in addition to wiping down with the sheen, I decided, I didn't know if it was good or bad to do this, but I put Resoline on it. There is a coat of Resoline on it and that is why this is so shiny. And I don't know uh, if this is, was a good idea for the longevity of the bag, but my goodness, it certainly looks pretty darn good I think. The bottom in particular looks fantastic and so does one side. Um, so basically there I made a few mistakes with this bag. Lesson learned. Don't take shortcuts. The biggest thing I did was to wipe down the bag when the paint had already started drying and that resulted in some bits of hair or fluff from the cloth um, sticking to the bag and I never got it off. So there's you know if you go up close you'll see some residue of guckiness here and up close you'll also find on all parts of the bag that there are still some like marks um, from the paint brushes and whatnot so that didn't come through very well and I think that's a result of not having done the process that I was supposed to do which if you want to see done the right way uh, please click through here to my Houston dye job bag because that one I did it by the book and I recommend uh, for future projects doing it by the book. But I can't say that this is terrible. Um, it's certainly better than the yellow and beige one that I had before. Uh, now I can possibly use this bag. Um, I wish I had the um, Witherall to go in and do the insides. I still have a chance to do that if I want to, but it's all right like this. Oh, there's a plane, hold on. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't do too bad a job on lining it and I think in future this is a place where it might chip is along the black lining here but for doing it considering I just eyeballed it did it by hand I, there's no major mistakes that I made it looks pretty good and the handles are a lot stiffer than they were before because of all the paint a little drier perhaps but they stick up nicely whereas before they flop down so yeah I'm Overall, pretty happy with it. I'm glad I did it. Uh, I wish I'd taken a little more care in, in doing it the proper way, but no regrets. So there you go, guys. That is the Reed, Louis Vuitton Reed, R-E-A-D-E uh, handbag, originally in some sort of cream 
sort of lightened to yellow and now I've sort of given it some new life and yeah I'll, I'll use it and you know even if I don't use this bag my goodness you know wouldn't this make a nice ornament uh, on your shelf with with like some flowers popping out of it fake ones so they don't you know you don't get any foliage in here ruining it I think it looks great so and again I've, I've bragged about this so many times I only paid 35 bucks for this very very good deal so there you go it's the renaissance of love tonight Promise that she'll hold on tight It's the renaissance of love tonight Promise that she'll be all